To make a beaded scissor fob, you are going to need beads. You can use beads from Michael's, Joann's, those are my local store, so that's what I have access to. You can just use beads from Walmart or wherever you have your beads from. You're going to need a line of beads. So I'm going to be using these in abbreviation today to kind of save time and because that's about what I have left for beads. Since I've been making so many fobs, my bead supply is a little low. But these will work great and I will show you how to do that in just a moment. You will also need a jump ring or two. I've got a couple different sizes and we'll pick what's best suited when I get there. You also need one or two of these eye pins. They might be flat on the bottom and look more like nails. They will work equally well. If you've got some that are a little longer, that's fine too. You can cut off the excess. Just a couple of eye pins, whatever you've got is probably fine. You will also need two crimp tubes for each scissor fob. Those I will be using with this, what is this called? One step crimper. So there are other ways to set a crimp. I think it's usually a two step process. If you don't have this tool and you've got other ways of setting a crimp, uh, you will need to look up a different video for that. This is the only one I know how to use and I got this at Joann's, I will link it below. You will also need some wire cutters, round nose pliers, and I have two different pairs of needle nose pliers. This is a little larger, this one's a little smaller. I like them both for different things. So you'll probably see me use both of them in the same tutorial. Oh, we're getting rained on. <laughs> okay, you will also need a pair of scissors, of course, and a clip that fits the scissors. Again, I'm getting these supplies at Joann's because that's one of my only two local stores. This one fits, so I will probably use this one. No, I will use this one because while this one does fit, there's plenty of room here. It also fits on this rainbow pair. And this little clip does not fit the rainbow pair. So I will be using the little one there and the bigger one here. I'm just going to leave them right there. Clip to the respective scissors so that I do not get them messed up when I do the fobs. Now for the other end of the scissor, I like to have a point protector. That's what these are called on Amazon. This tube right here is from Fat Quarter Shop. It is rained on, sorry. It's keeping them nice and dry though. It comes with two of this large pink, two large green, and there were two large blue and it was new. There are also two of each small colored in this tube when it's new. And it's for 48, 498, something like that on Fat Quarter Shop. Again, I'll link that below. So that large piece does fit fine. Let's try the small one. You're getting about half an inch of coverage on this little one and about ooh, good three quarter on the big one. But I know that this big one also fits my blunt edge scissors and this small one does not. So I'm gonna save the large one for my blunt scissors and use this little bit shorter one or smaller rather overall for the sharp scissors. On this one, I could use a small, but I want the purple color. The purple co color is only offered by Clover. I got these at Joann's. I've also seen them on Amazon. They are four or five dollars for a set of four, so they are significantly more expensive. And they only come in this purple color, and they are a little bit different style, just slightly. But since I want the purple color, I'm going to go ahead and use this one on the rainbow pair. Okay, and I do just kind of leave those set up that way because I don't want to get them mixed up. So then my first step is to, now let's prepare this first. We're gonna prepare, and I do use a pin. So if you just wanna use a needle, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, grab a pin. Oh, and you will want a charm if you wanna kinda of decorate it at the end. We'll talk about that more when we get there. This one does not have the center marked. The ones from Lori Hole, and I've gotten them off Amazon before too. You can see there's like a little mark there in the center. We'll use that for a guide on the pink one. On the purple one, we're just kind of get guess the center. There we go, don't stab yourself. It should come through the other side. Let's grab one of these eye pins. Poke it through as well. The purple ones tend to be a little bit crankier than the other colors. You can make sure it's the right size here. Okay, open that up a little bit. Also bent it a little bit. There we go, we're gonna kind of straighten it back out. Press it through. And I'll grab one of these guys. Pull it up. All right, that's our first step. Let me show you that again on this pink one. So I'm gonna start with the pin or the needle or whatever it is that you're poking your preliminary hole with. All right, 
right there at that center mark. Oh, come on, don't be stubborn. There we go. Use that as a guide for your eye pin. Sometimes this process goes really, really well. It has been going well all week. These are kind of my last two pairs of scissors, so it's raining, but I need to record this so that I can get these done. Come on, don't be so cranky. I'm gonna completely destroy this eye pin trying to get it through here. They can be difficult. Usually they're not, but they can be. Come on. There we go. This one's so bent out of shape. I'm gonna grab a new one to put in there. It's gonna save a lot of time if it's straight and I have nothing here to straighten it with. So, I got it. Have a straight one and there we go now this loop might be a little bit big we're gonna see if it pulls in it does it also creates a bump so let's back it back out we're just gonna smash that a little bit there we go so it's not quite as loopy there now it's not creating a unsightly bump on the sides. Now we're going to trade those needle nose for the round nose. Here is centered. We're going to go a little bit up. Is this proper? I have no idea, but it's been working for me for a while now. So this is how I do it. Slip in back there. And then you're just going to take this tail that you've left and wrap it around. At this point, I usually switch hands, grab my smaller nose pliers, and you're just going to wrap the best you can. I have heard that the thinner eye pins, like if the eye pin was made of thinner wire, this wrapping part is easier. But I have a bunch of this size and this color and so I've just been using these guys. It's almost around. See we've got that little bit of wire sticking out. That's usually about as good as I get it and then I just kind of crimp it around, press on it, and press that tail up into the wrap. And that seems to work really, really well. As long as you don't feel it, you're good to go. And then you have this little wrap, coil, whatever you want to call this. Sarah called these the traffic cones when I was showing her this last week. So now you've got a little loop on your traffic cone. I'm going to put it back onto the scissors we're going to use it for. Let's make one for the purple cone. Here is center. I'm going to go slightly up. And same thing. Wrap. I usually get two wraps. That's what I like. If you get three wraps, it's fine. It's not a big deal. All right. Let's switch hands. Same thing here on both of these. Here they are. A couple of wraps. A couple of twists. That's all you need to do for your cones. They are ready to put onto the scissors. So for this pair, I'm going to use this strand from Joanne's Holy and Joe. Leave that guy down there. Unclip the heart. Whoops. Put him right there. I usually use the center line. No particular reason. I just like to. And then we're going to measure, I usually start at the 10. It needs to go at least four and a half to five inches, depending on what your pattern is. So let's see here, one, two, three, four. We could end it right there after five beads. That would be a really nice length. Or if you like it a little bit longer, you can go the full five inches and include this guy. What do I like the look of? Do I want six? I usually like it at odds. So I'm gonna end it right there at the five. Now if you see, we have a little jump ring here that connects each of these fancy wire wrapped beads. So we're going to open this jump ring. And usually I do that with just one of the needle nose. Whoops. And I'm going to press on this one. If it's a really, really thick ring, you may want to use two pairs of pliers. Okay, I'm going to take that ring right there. Slide on my hook. 
and press them back together. Push this one towards me and this one away until they meet. Well, maybe. There's a camera right in front of my face. There we go. And that's connected. Now to connect this guy down here, we could have wrapped it right into there. What a pain. No. Let's just grab a jump ring and this will be good to go. Now you get to select your size. These ones are a little bit smaller. These ones are a little bit bigger. Either would work. I don't need the size. So I'm just going to go for a small one on this project. A little bit of crinkle. Sorry. One. These open the same way. It's a little bit thinner, it looks like. There's the opening. I'm going to slip this guy on first because he's smaller. And slip that on. And there you go. Now, technically it's done. You can use it just like that. Mom. Protected scissor end. Mom. Hold on. Clip together. But I like to put a little charm up here. So I usually just go ahead and lay it out and don't clip it to the scissor yet. And lay my charm options here. You can use this pendant that has pink in it and I just used purple. It's got both colors. That would be a fine choice. There's a tree. This is from that pack I got off Amazon. 300 charms for $13 or something like that. I will link it below. What do I want to put on here? That looks pretty cool. The unicorn. I am a music teacher. Here's a treble clef. Well, that's nice. That one's a little bit smaller, so it's very dainty. Eiffel Tower, remember my brother? This is a 3D one, which is really cool. I'm kind of feeling the dragonfly today. Or I've brought this little dream catcher. Any of these would be fine. Whichever one you want to use, I'm going to go ahead and use this one, I think. It's the size I want to use, and it's just what I want to use today. So there you go. Do I need... No, it's not very thick. I don't need a very big jump ring. So let me grab another one of these little guys. This is super scientific. I have no clue what size these are. Um, usually the ones at Joann's come in a pack with, I think, three different sizes to it. Ooh, we might get rained out. And a lot of times I put it up here. If I was going to do that, I should have used the bigger ring. So I'm going to put it right here on the jump wing we jump ring we use to connect the clip clasp Wah. okay I'm not super advanced I just make scissor fobs so when there gets to be a lot of things on my ring it's a little bit tricky for me there we go that looks nice and it's ready to be used use beads a string of beads that you got from wherever. This string is right off the card from Joann's. I'm gonna unclip this guy. And this is too long. You noticed it goes all the way past three. So we've got seven plus inches here. So let's open this. I'm gonna use my wire cutters because I don't have scissors right here. Yeah, we'll just do an, undo the whole strand for you. There we go. All right. I like having this big ball in the center. I don't need two. So I think we're going to cut out this guy. We're just looking to shorten this a little bit. Or it's going to be way longer than I like. If you want it this long, you can do it this long. This is yours. Make it your own. But for me, it's too long. Okay, I cut you. Why aren't you coming off? There we go. And I'm going to lay it out in the order it came off. Here we go. Come on, Mom. Come on, Mom. We're going to get wet. I'll go inside then, buddy. All right, we're gonna remove this guy, the spacer, Mom, the center bead. Um, what did you say? Come on, Mom. All right, let's move it down. All right, I'm just shortening it here. I don't need all these beads at the end. Probably cut off that guy, and down here, cut off a, cut off a couple there. So now we're at about ten to five. That's about five inches. I like that. Fine. That looks good. I like mine symmetrical. doesn't have to be. Not all of mine are. The vast majority of them are. All right, so there's my extra beads, extra spacers. Ooh, 
look, I have two extra spacers. If I wanted, I could go ahead whew, and add a spacer right in there. Yeah, that's nice. All right. They add a tiny bit of length, but not really. We're going to have that guy here and this one at the end. Oh, that's very pretty. And I brought the angels because I thought I might want an angel off to the side. Yeah, I'm going to do that and show you. This would also look really, really pretty. Who knows, I may change it later, but I want to show you how to use one of these if you would decide to use beads that make a design. There's also some that make a dragonfly. There might be some that make a butterfly. So these are really cool. You can use them almost the same way. Just a little bit different. Not that tricky. Okay, I think I maybe forgot to show you this in the beginning. It is covered in rain now. Hopefully it's easy to see. It's a beading wire, again, from Joann's. Mine's getting kind of low, but it comes in this amazing, easy dispenser that is so easy to use, and it's worth every penny. I don't know what I paid for it. I'm sure I used a coupon, and it's worth it. You don't need the 49 strand or the 30-some strand. Just the 7 strand is going to be enough for a scissor fob. So these are the crimp tubes. There we go. Need one of those guys first. Let it go all the way down. I can set the other one right here where I can get it. And we're going to string this from the top down. In case you do have stuff that's directional or it's not symmetrical like mine is, you just want to keep it in order. So I've always strung them from the top down. And you'll see why in just a second. There might be a faster way of doing this. If there is, you can leave a comment below. Let me know. This doesn't take me that long and I haven't messed up the design yet. So I just stick with it one at a time. If the camera weren't here, I usually let my left hand do this and my right hand feeds them on. But you know, you gotta do things for sake of recording sometimes. There we go. Almost there. We've already prepared our end, which we're coming up at. So we can just add it when we get there. We're gonna wanna put that last crimp bead on before the end piece. Here's the last bead. Here's that crimp tube. There we go. And then the traffic cone with the loops. All right, I pulled that last bead up so that you can see the crimp there. Let, the last, let that bead go. And I have a couple inches here on the end. I'm gonna feed it back into that tube. Pull these ends, pull it up nice and tight to the traffic cone or point protector as you'll find them online. Set it here in the top. If you have this tool, it came with directions too. And then to crimp, you're just gonna press these together and it will, it will make a noise. See, like a little click. And kind of loosen that bottom one. You see my finger did that and open the top and you should be able to lift it right out. There we go. Crimped. Yeah, it loosened a little bit while I was showing you guys. That's okay, maybe we will just put, no, we won't put a charm on there. Never mind. that's the end. <laughs> Then I'm going to bring these beads back up over top of both ends, not cutting anything here, just bringing the beads over the top, the spacer beads, the little beads, the see-through beads, all the beads. There you go. It's covered. So Mom. then I just kind of shortcut it, drop the rest on. Mom. There we go. There's Mom. what it's looking like. Mama. Isn't that pretty? Mommy, Daniel, um, I hear you. Me, me too. There's the crimp. Mom. There's my clip. Mom. Daniel, Daniel. Rain won't kill you. Okay, I'm gonna go over to my little measure. I need two, two and a half, whatever you're comfortable with. I usually just kind of eye it. I've been making these all weekend. So I need new wire cutters because they're dull, but I don't usually have to measure at the end either. There we go. Pull a clip out of the way. You can see that crimp. If it has gone to the other side like that, no, 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 we must put him back in our back in his place. You want him to be four, before the clasp. Same thing here. You're going to put it back through. Oh, I also caught a bead. Well, 
That might not be a big deal. It might make it difficult. Let's see. And you want to get it as close again. So I'm just kind of pulling this and kind of cinching everything together. You don't want there to be a big space in your beads. Right? You want it to stay as a line. And if it's not up as close as it can be, then you're going to have spaces, right? Gaps. You don't want that. So get this cinched up as tight as you can. Get my string here and then pull it. It is harder with a camera in your face, but hopefully it won't be quite as difficult for you. Let's see if I can grab this thing. Just a second. It's raining, so I, I'm losing my grip. All right, there we go. Hold all the beads together. Aha. And then I just pulled that in. Good. Nice line. No spaces, but not so tight you can't move it. Then we're going to do the same thing here. We'll open these. Clip is free. Put that space, not spacer, um, the crimp tube right in. And there we go. Relax those. Open the top. There we go. There's our crimp. And these are what's holding your strand, whoops, holding your strand together, your crimps top and bottom. So you can tell I got a much closer one there than I did at the bottom. You're not really going to notice. Again, don't clip your wire tail yet. You want to go through beads at least an inch. Sometimes it's an absolute pain. You have to do just a bead or two at a time. You just kind of mess with it until you get it through. Now I think I see right here a tail. Sometimes you can get a little bit, yep, I see it right there. So then I'm gonna reach in, my fingers aren't that teeny tiny. There you go, see I grab the tail and pull it. It's not pulled all the way through, there's a little loop right there. A little bit of a tug, there we go. And just keep working it until you can't get it through anymore or you run out of wire. Usually until I can't get it through anymore. And then I end up cutting off usually about a half inch of wire and then I'm done. It is raining. That's not really an inch worth. I should get it through this big bead if I can. And just kind of my minimum. Oh, you know what? It's raining. That's all you get it through. I'd say an inch minimum. We're basically there and it's pouring rain. So we're gonna cut it as closely as we can. I really need new wire cutters. Let's try it that way. There we go. As long as you don't have a tail sticking out, you're good. And it is ready to put on your scissors. Now again, you can put charms on here wherever you want. I usually put it right up here and just clip it right to the like built-in jump ring that's on my clasp. So I could do that. I could choose one of these like this, just like we did in the last pair and clip it right to that. But so you know how to use these, I'm gonna pull off an angel Sorry, pull off an angel and then I will show you how to attach these loose beads. I pulled off a little angel, she's right there, put her in order. Now, if you don't want all the rest of your beads coming off and you wanna keep these little angels in order, like I did not do with my dragonflies and now I'm not sure how they go, I just take the tail, whoops, let me stay in frame here, and I put it back through the last bead and that will keep them from all coming off, okay? You don't have to do this, of course, but if you want to keep them, from coming apart. Wow, this rain, I can't do anything in this rain. And that's how you would do that. Dry off my hands here. Okay, we'll just pretend I did that. You can use the loop end eye pin. You can use the kind of nail looking eye pin. You can use whichever eye pin you have. I think they're, oh, there's a little ball one that I have at home that's gold. Whatever you have, whatever you wanna use. That's how you're gonna attach your angel or in the right order, or your dragonfly or whoever it is. Here's your little head. Whoops, hold the pin so it doesn't come out. There we go. And then her little crown. Boop. Isn't she cute? All right, I should have brought one that was a little bit longer, but I'm just gonna have to deal with it. And then you can either put it right to the clip. I don't know that I'm that advanced though. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did on the little traffic cones, those little point protectors. 
and I'm going to start at the top this time and I'm just going to make a little loop that we can attach her with like so let's bend it back a little bit so it looks a little more professional there we go isn't she cute now I do need here I thought I wasn't going to need any jump rings but I do a small one's enough and my hands are wet so we're going to get a lot <laughs> all right let's open it put our little angel on and then right here I'm gonna put her right to the clasp. Whoa. Do this indoors where it's not raining on you and things won't be slippery. There you go, there's your last tip. Oh, isn't she cute? So here is our final scissor fob because I'm out of scissors now and I'm about out of beads and I am totally out of crimps, as in crimp tubes. So there we go. There's our two pairs. This one's a little bit long. That's okay. They're beautiful.